Let's take a look at keyframing. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1.2. Your screens may look a little different. Generally speaking, each frame in a frame-by-frame -frame animation is a keyframe. Well, that was until Animation Pro 1.2 came along. Animation Pro allows the properties of the virtual camera, or a figure, to be keyed across multiple frames. This can be used to produce long smooth camera transitions, or long smooth changes to a figure or clone. So let's take a look. Here I have a simple animation, consisting of 10 frames, where each frame is exactly the same. Now I'd like the figure in this animation to slide across the screen and then come to a stop. I could do that by moving the figure just a little bit in each and every frame. But that would be very time consuming and I may not even produce an acceptable result if I didn't move the figure precisely each time. In Animation Pro 1.2 however, I can position the figure in the last frame, position the figure in the first frame, and then select Current Figure Clone from the new key menu. Ouch! This looks pretty daunting. So let's step through it slowly. Firstly, the purpose of figure keyframing is to create a smooth transition between a start frame and an end frame. Now Animation Pro assumes that you'll always be on the start frame when you open this popover. So you cannot adjust the start frame here. You can, however, select the desired end frame. In my case, I'll select frame 10 as that's the frame in which my figure is positioned at the other side of the screen. Now the next thing that we need to consider is exactly what properties of the figure we wish to create the transition for. All of the figure's animatable properties are displayed in the middle of the popover. So if you only want the position of the figure to change between the start and the end frame, press the deselect all button to turn off all the switches and then select Key Position. In my case, however, I'm happy for Animation Pro to adjust everything between the start and the end frame, so I'll leave the switches turned on. Next, we need to think about how the transition is to occur. Should it be a linear transition, or should it ease in or ease out? Perhaps, as I do, you'd like the transition to start quickly and then slow down towards the end. Well, you can do that by adjusting the transition curve as shown. Now there's a few other buttons on the popover that I should explain before I finish here. Firstly, my figure has a reflection, which is actually a clone. So if I want the clone to be automatically adjusted by the keyframing process, then I need to make sure that the Update Clones button is on. Secondly, Animation Pro can automatically add a figure if it finds that the figure is missing in any of the frames. To do that, make sure that the Add Figure If Missing switch is on. Thirdly, you can choose whether Animation Pro should key any figure substitutes that it finds between the start and end frame by ensuring that the Key Substitute switch is turned on. Please note, however, that Animation Pro will not key item movements bends or stretches in figure substitutes, as that has the potential to destroy their geometry. Lastly, if you have user tweens set up in your animation between the start frame and the end frame, then you can choose whether the figure should be keyed in those as well, by setting the key user tween switch appropriately. OK, so I'm happy with all of the selections that I've made here. So I'll press the green tick button to process all of the frames between the start keyframe and the end keyframe. Animation Pro will pop up a warning to let me know that the changes cannot be easily undone. I'm happy that I've set up everything here correctly, so I'll select Yes to continue. Animation Pro will now modify the figure across the range of frames that I've selected. Now I can choose to press the little red cross button to terminate the process midway. But please note that this won't back out any of the changes made to any of the frames that have already been processed. So let's take a quick look at the result by opening the Quick Preview popover. As you can see, 
the figure now slides gracefully across the screen, slowing down as it approaches the right hand side. Now I think this animation could be made to look a little better if his tie was to flop downwards towards the end. So I'll open up the last frame and adjust his tie accordingly. In this case, I'd like to key the figure's tie over the last five frames so that it flops downwards as he slows down. So I'll select frame 6 as the start frame and open the keyframing popover again. As before, I'll start by selecting frame 10 as the end frame. Now I'd like the tie's movement to start slowly but then speed up towards the end. So I'll adjust the transition curve to ease in slowly and finish abruptly. Now if I were to press the green tick button now, I'd end up ruining the figure's movement that I set up earlier. So this time around, I'll turn off the key position switch so that everything except the figure's movement is changed. Let's process that and take a look at the result. So far, so good. But let's now take a look at keyframing the virtual camera to make this short animation look even better. As with the figure, we need to define the start and the end of the virtual camera transition. Now I'd like the camera to zoom in on the figure as he travels across the screen. So I'll select frame 10, open the virtual camera and zoom in on the figure. Next, I'll select frame 1 and then choose camera from the new key menu. Now the popover looks pretty much the same as it did before. This time however, there's far less options in the middle and that's because the virtual camera only has four animatable properties. Again, I'll select frame 10 as the end frame. This time however, I'm happy with a linear transition and all of the other options to remain selected. So I'll simply press the green tick button. And here's the fully rendered end result. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.